What do you say? Ah, uh, you can't make me camp champ. Oh, no? Sure. Okay. Michaela, do you want to do a Care Bears video with me? Mmm, I don't know. Oh, yeah? Okay, sure. Here a is a place we all can go Whenever we choose it, Care Ugh, okay. The Care Bears trilogy, which also was just the Care Bear cinematic universe in the 80s, was grotesque the mental gymnastics I had to do to understand the plot. As an adult, I simply couldn't fathom how these things interconnected. I guess a child is a little bit more flexible with that. We'll start with Care Bears 1. The first Care Bears movie saved this Canadian animation studio, Nelvana, from going under pretty much because it not only, with a budget of 2 million, brought in 34 million box office. Yeah, 34. That's impressive. 34 fucking million. But it also reinvigorated like the way film was aimed towards children. I think the 80s had some profound moments for making things just to sell toys. But you know, they did a good job. A lot of these things still exist. The Care Bears has a plentiful universe to this day. It wasn't the best form of media. They made back their money, so I guess who's complaining? I think we should put a disclaimer that all of our insults and criticisms have nothing to do with the lovely individuals who put their efforts into making these films, especially because when you have a certain budget, and it is the 80s, and you're using animation cells, there's only but so much you can do. To be fair, we are watching it. We're still consuming it to yep. this day, so. Let's go through the plot of the first movie, which is just called The Care Bears Movie from 1985. It begins with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cherrywood, these lovely elderly couple, and their orphanage. Um, Mr. Cherrywood is reading a lovely bedtime story, which becomes the Care Bears, and the origin of how Mr. Cherrywood is connected. And this is where we introduce Kim and Jason, who are the most punk-ass bitches. Well, I'll tell you what we know about people you care for. They always let you down. Kim and Jason, as is all of the protagonists of every one of the movies, are the most pessimistic children I've ever seen in my life. They have given up on life, and they're like five and seven. Two magical bears coming up to you, and they've got pictures on their tummy, and they're like, I'm a magical bear, I love friendship. Most kids wouldn't look at them and say, fuck you. Then we pan over to Nicholas and the great fettuccine. Yes, this is the anti-Italian hate propaganda that we're fueling here. We, we have the two Care Bears talking to some orphans. The orphans don't want anything to do with them. We've got Nicholas and the great fettuccine and Nicholas is not getting any respect for his job and he's like a magician assistant. So we, we have a lot of plots going on. All the while, the Care Bears are having some drama up in Care Bear land. Care a lot. Please use it by its correct. You're right. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Name. You're right. This is professional. Care a lot. Which is like heaven? I think you brought up that there is a religious allegory here. Maybe just the first two. The last one is a really interesting out of the realm movie, but the first two definitely establish some kind of Christian satanic magic theme that's going on. Also, Mr. Fucking Cherrywood had the little kids doing a prayer in the beginning. You're right. Yeah. Okay. No, this is, this, this has is, gotta be. There's something yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Which then brings us to what acts as the devil, which I'm assuming is the book that they definitely wanted to make sexy. High cheekbones. She got a full face of makeup. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but on the cover, there's a lot of Celtic and Norse like symbols on it, which is associated with paganism. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but I noticed it. That's very interesting. Yeah, we have a sexy book trying to seduce Nicholas to make everyone angry because he was angry. <laughs> Nicholas, what have you done? Back in yonder day in the 80s, every single Care Bears shtick was magic except for like Grumpy and Secret Bear. I actually made a note that everyone needs to get off Grumpy's dick. They're all mad at him and his name is literally Grumpy. What do you expect? How come I'm always the one fixing things around here? Because you never complain, Grumpy Bear. <laughs> So the next thing that happened is, like every single Care Bear movie, the Care Bears abduct children to yes. care a lot. This happens in every single movie. They abduct kids with no adults watching and take them off into the clouds. And Kim and Jason are, they're still mad. I don't want to look around and get a tour. The B plot is Grumpy made a teleportation machine that he didn't make very well, or that the baby Care Bears messed up. We haven't talked yet about reproduction. If there are, <laughs> if there 
are new babies in the first movie, how are they born? Care Bear back. <laughs> Care Bear back. Um, I'd like to go over some anatomy things real quick. Okay. Um, one of them being is that some of these bears have their tails in their ass crack, but not all of them. Those are just butt plugs. <laughs> I think that, listen, some of them really do. <laughs> all of the Care Bears stand like shy anime girls. The one does like the little finger thing. And I was like, what is, like, why, where have they been inspired by to make these Care Bears? Hanada. Anyway, devolving back to the actual plot. They tell Kim and Jason that they need to help Nicholas because they've been shown love by taking care of babies. So Kim and Jason are sent to help Nicholas for some God unforeseen reason. And their journey through teleportation gets interrupted and they're sent to the reject forest with the Care Bear cousins um, who have a different origin story in movie two, but here they're just weird animals who make disturbing sounds. Um, Braveheart bear, right? That makes sense. He's a lion. I've never wanted to guillotine an animal, but that that Braveheart is just the no that roar that he has. Do you remember the song in the forest where the one bear goes, "I'm hydroplaning"? Oh my god! Oh my god! I literally have this written down. I was like, I'm going to quote this the next time I'm driving in the rain. Look, I'm hydroplaning. This is another piece of beef I have with this movie. Did you notice how many ingredients were his final ingredient? Yes. <laughs> there were like seven different things where it's like, ah, uh, the final ingredient, a cigarette butt, ah, uh, the final ingredient, spider web, ah. Uh, I was like, dude, you can't keep doing this. He's also so dumb, like the dumbest villain I've ever seen. He knows what the Care Bears look like because he's already met them. So I was curious. Is it that Carolot is just over this one like suburban town or is Carolot over the entire earth and then everywhere across the globe, people were just punching each other? Carolot's only for white people. <laughs> Kim, Don, and Alice are the same character. End of the movie, obviously they save the day with love. Book gone. They seal it up. Care Bear is happy. And you wanna know what? Nicholas was Mr. Cherrywood all along. I also love that one closing line of, Gee whiz, isn't having parents great? Hey Jason, aren't parents great? So that's the movie. So did you have any other takeaways from the first film? Um, yeah, I will say I am band name diving Tunnel of Hate, which is <laughs> at the carnival they have Tunnel of Love, but they cross it out and put hate. That song was a masterpiece. Terrifying. The one where he's chasing them? Yeah. Truly nightmare. Nothing to do, but hide someplace where we can run be found. Don't make a sound. Make a sound. I also am going to say my controversial opinion. The Care Bear stare is overused and it's underwhelming. And also it kind of feels like the Care Bear cousins don't get the same light. They're asked to join in. They didn't do anything. We both know that they could have done their rainbow magic without the cousins, but they're yeah. like, no, oh, feel included, I guess. They didn't need the Care Bear cousins. You already have cute bears. Why had animals that look like bears but aren't? So yeah, that first movie was something else. There were too many layers. But you know what? It set us up for the disappointment that would surely follow. So Care Bears 2, A New Generation, came out in 1986, so a year later. This one had a $3.4 million budget and made $12 million in box office. I'm still impressed that this atrocity made money, but it still wasn't as critically or financially acclaimed as the original. I can't tell that they spent more money, um, but I could tell why they made less. <laughs> <laughs> to go over the plot with this one, can you please introduce our blue-eyed, blonde-haired children? Don and John. I think this is nerd propaganda. No one chooses me at volleyball, boo-hoo. Um, because they're sad that they're bad at sports, but it's okay, they have other redeeming qualities. They can babysit. <laughs> so Christy wants to be camp champ, and can you please... <laughs> recite the hardcore line that this little frat boy came in with. So he comes up to her and he absolutely shreds on her ass. Um, he says, I'm better than you at swimming, running, jumping, but so what? So is every other kid. You can't get any lower than where he's put her. Um, and he's camp champ. He's better than everybody. He was my favorite character. He was, kind of, I believe, the only character with character development because he learned towards the end he was a dick. If I ever become camp champ again, I'd let others win once in a while. 
Ha! As you said, more Care Bears come, abduct the twins. Yes. Teach them about babysitting. We need to talk about the timeline here. The movie opens with the Great Care Bear Migration, where these babies are brought to a land that isn't care a lot. We learn that they will become the adult bears that we all know and love. But Kim and Jason both meet them as babies and adults. What? Not to mention, it completely goes against the first movie where they are just meeting the Care Bear cousins. In this one, it's showing that they knew them as babies. They knew them as babies. They're on this, like, council with one another. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, if time passes differently, did they forget about the Care Bear cousins? Because maybe they were babies. Short-term memory and whatever. Yeah. Does that mean that they helped Kim and Jason in between helping John and Don? Are Care Bears immortal? If this is what's happening furthest in the past, because then the Care Bears are older and they help Kim and Jason, and Nicholas is a kid age then and then becomes an old man and the Care Bears are still looking in, we're going through like decades of Care Bear. I mean, though, I, I don't know how you can establish immortality if they were once babies. Time must pass differently there. Maybe they are aging at a normal rate, but the way time works in Care a lot is different. Meanwhile, we get to what I is probably my favorite part of the Care Bears trilogy, Dark Heart. This who knows how long immortal being seeks to hurt the Care Bears. Why? Undetermined, but he, he wants to get them. Um, and also maybe wants to seduce a child. We referenced this scene. What do you say? Nah, uh, you can't make me camp champ. Oh no? Sure. Okay. You got a deal. Uh, listen, I think it was pure seduction. He sat that way and she went, this man means business. And also, maybe I want to kiss him a little. <laughs> it also brings back that whole religious element that we were talking about because he's essentially the snake in the Garden of Eden here. I mean, he is, he's literally red. He changes into all these creatures that are deemed kind of like evil and like naughty and bad. But he, he seduces Christy into making a deal with him. Very, very devilish. Sign a deal with me. You know, you get something now, I get something later to be camp champ. And she's just so good at sports now. She can do a cartwheel. He doesn't really explain his plan in making Christy come to the evil side. What does her being Camp Champ have to do with the fall of the Care Bears? By her being a dick Camp Champ, it creates this a good kid making them bad. But only Oz, she was kind of annoying from day one for me. I don't think she was that nice to Kim and Jason. Wait, not Kim and Jason. I don't think she was that nice to John and Don. I'm mostly interested in Darkheart and his extremely convoluted plan to take down the Care Bears. So yeah, so Kim and Jason take care of the babies. They come back to Earth, realize Christy's a dick now. They go back to the Care Bear land where the Care Bears are grown up now. In that time, the Care Bears had established care a lot and Forest of Feelings. A lot of politics had already happened. And they're like, oh, we're going to move them to the Forest of Feelings so that Darkheart won't find them. And we're going to move them to care a lot so he won't find them. He finds them there. They're really, he finds them in both places so easily. But also when Darkheart does go to care a lot, the fit is immaculate. I'm the caring meter reader. I've come oh. to read your caring meter. <laughs> and it looks like I've got here just in time. <laughs> they're so stupid they're like yeah that makes sense come on in come on in 12 year old boy but he's wearing some sick shades yes <laughs> at one point he tries to trick them into saving christy in the lake yeah they they have her throw the oars away and she's like i'm stuck help me but then he gets knocked over and she saves him and he's like thinking man maybe i want to kiss this girl too <laughs> He calls her child. In the, like, the final boss battle scene, he's like, oh no, this poor child. Says child about three times. Acknowledges that she's younger than him. And maybe you could think, oh, he just cares for her like a daughter. We got an arcane situation over here. No, because he's holding her hand at the end, and you just don't hold hands like that with your new 10-year-old friends. No, no, he's like, and also he's like, I'm a real boy. Boy? You are like an immortal demon just a second ago. And now you're a little boy? Like makes reference to, oh, I'm so sorry for everything I've done. So he remembers all of the bad that he's done. He's just like, now I am no longer a shape-shifting magic guy. So I guess I can be a kid. You don't have parents. You don't have a social security number. I'm gonna go to Mr. fucking Cherrywood and he'll set him up with parents real nice. But when is Mr. Cherrywood? Is he now? Is he in the future? I think the timeline is in the past, you have the camp champ business with Christy and the demon. Present, we have uh, Kim and Jason and the magician. And the future, it's Mr. Cherrywood recalling the past, which was the present. Okay. But the Care Bears have two different origin stories 
but also one of them, they're both kids and adults within the same timeline. I don't know if I'm more or less confused. So this third installment, 1987, meaning that they were making these year after year, you could tell. Care Bears Adventure in Wonderland with a budget of 5 million, box office 6 million. It was just Alice in Wonderland with Care Bears. It was just Alice in Wonderland with Care Bears. The one thing I will say, the rapping Cheshire Cat. That cat had the sickest beats. Oh, I see that princess in a lonely room where the wizard's got a lot to weigh. Now he's one bad dude, he's in a nasty mood, and he wants to be the king someday. Two songs, I think he had? Yeah, two songs. Oh my god, each one was fantastic. I just... This was a bad movie. Bad. It was genuinely terrible. There is like a, a like political element to this movie that we didn't uncover. Why does she need to pass the, the crown on this specific day? And if the princess isn't around, it automatically goes to the shady wizard. Princess is trapped. Honestly, doesn't seem like anybody's looking for her for a very long time. They also tell Alice, this is going to be really dangerous and you have nothing to gain by doing this for us, but you kind of look like her, so we're going to take you to another world. Again, abducting a child. Also, they canonically link these two universes together. Swiftheart is cousins with the, um, the, the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland? Why? I just, and also none of the Alice in Wonderland art looks anything like any of the art from their world. Yeah, this movie was, it was poorly done. I wish I had more to say about it, but it was boring. It was simply Alice in Wonderland, which the only parts that were different was the fact that the, um, Cheshire Cat was rapping. That was very fun. The fact that you have actual Care Bears in it, but it felt very inconsequential to the plot. And the fact that they had this weird doppelganger, Alice. Yeah. No personality. No personality. I don't remember what she learned. I assume it's that she was special some way. I'm not sure she's special enough. So what is your biggest takeaway? My biggest gripe with this movie, with this series, is the, the plot holes and the confusion. I am so sick that they dare release these movies this close and create all of these plot holes. So yeah, if you hate yourself just enough, I recommend this trilogy, except for not the third one, because I don't think anyone should hate themselves that much. It was just not good. No. Not no, good. I agree. I don't know how to end this, so I'm just gonna hydroplane. Look! I'm hydroplaning!